Hey, what's up? My name is Alex and today I would like to show you a neat little trick inside ZBrush, which I find is not very well documented. Um, namely, I'll show you how to make a rope, a twisted rope inside ZBrush. Uh, I found uh, this trick, this little nugget on the web myself a few years ago, but the information, it tends to be scattered around the internet and today I would like to put all this information into one tutorial. So let's get into ZBrush. So now let's see how we can create a nicely twisted rope inside ZBrush. That is actually pretty easy as long as you know what you're doing. And we know what we're doing. We'll start with a procedural object. Uh, we'll start with a cylinder. And the difference between a regular polygonal object and a procedural object is in this special little menu which is called initialize. As you can see there are several parameters here along with uh, age divide and v divide. Age divide regulates um, the density of the cir circumference of this object. So I'll make sure that uh, the number is dividable by 2. So let's say 30. Now now we go into masking. We are in, uh, right now we are in, a, in the tool palette. Tool palette. You'll, you, you will find tool palette in the menus at the top of the screen. But in my case, I've put my tool palette on the right area where it is easily accessible for me. Now we go into masking and here is the thing. Here is this little thing which is hidden under the mask by alpha for some reason. So what we do, we mask all, so uh, the button mask all, and now we uh, go into, we go down to mask by alpha, and here are some buttons and some parameters. We're interested in these two parameters, select and skip. We, um, I'm, going, I'm going to put, let's say, three into, uh, into the select parameter, and uh, let's say two into the skip parameter and then I'm going to uh, press call which means uh, which stands for column and see what happens see what happens here because we've put it three into the select it selects three three uh, polygons in the in a row and then it skips two now I'm going to invert the mask and I'm going to go into the deformation and use the inflate function in the negative like so something like this now I'm going to clear the mask I'm going to uh, to convert it into a polymesh 3d back to deformation I'm pressing uh, ctrl D to divide it a few times and now I'm inflating the whole thing a little bit now as a result of all these operations what we've got is this peculiar shape there is some ugly intersections at the top and at the bottom of the cylinder but I'm not worried about that what I'm interested in is this very even even surface in the middle now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hide all the portions which I don't need and I'm going to delete them I'm going into geometry delete lower because I don't need the lower subdivision levels anymore and now I'm going to press delete hidden. Next step we're back into the deformation and this time I'm going to use twist. I'm twisting the object and as you can see it now uh, starting to look like a segment of the rope and I think by now you get the idea. You get the idea what I'm driving at. So the idea here with a twist is uh, that I want to make sure at least approximately that the bottom and the uh, the top at the bottom and the bottom of this cylinder they are aligned because we are going to produce a rope out of this object and to do that I'm going to do the following I'm going into the uh, brush menu menu and I'm uh, pressing the button create insert mesh like so uh, I choose new and then I'm going uh, to create a sphere just to test out my new rope and adjust some parameters. Here is the sphere. I convert it into polymesh 3D like previously with the cylinder. And now I can insert this object, but it is not what I want right now. 
what I want is to create a spline. I'm going into stroke. Here is uh, the stroke menu and I'm going to um, switch on the curve mode like so. As you can see the rope is already uh, following, following the spline. But as you can see the rope now is segmented and that is not what we are going for. So we are going now into the brush menu, go to modifiers. I'm going to readjust my ZBrush uh, window right now to make sure that you get everything now. And uh, here in the brush menu, in the modifier submenu, there are a few parameters which we want to play with. First of all, it is stretch. I press stretch and it is already a little bit better. What stretch basically does, it stretches this uh, segment along the path. It bends it in certain areas where needed. And uh, right now, by looking at it, I can see that uh, the segments, they don't match perfectly. You can probably see it too. And I would like to fix that. There is a simpler method to see right away if it's gonna work or not. No. What I'm doing right now is I've um, I've turned on the move mode with a W and now I can uh, draw this transpose line. Then I'm going to press Ctrl and Shift together and I'm going to copy this segment up to see if the bottom matches with the top. Now I press uh, the Ctrl to make a copy and I um, press Shift to make sure that it moves uh, vertically, straight up. That is much, much faster. Bingo! Like you can see right here, we have almost perfect match. And I can safely go to Brush, Create Insert Mesh, New, Stroke Curve Mode, back to the sphere, with other ugly, ugly ropes, and now I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a near perfect result. Stretch, it is stretched. It's very important here to adjust, to adjust the overlap parameter correctly. So there is a little bit of separation because um, the, prog the program is going to create um, some extra polygons to fill out these, uh, these holes, these cracks. And I don't want these uh, extra polygons to be too tight. So I'm going to press weld points and look at this. It's a perfect rope now. Let's try it again. It is absolutely perfect. Uh, the seams are barely noticeable. But that is not all. That is not all. Now let's create an even more complicated rope. We're going to, we're going back to our procedural cylinder and this time this time I'm going to uh, back to the initialize menu I'm going to I'm going to downgrade it to uh, basically just three sides and I want to make sure that it is that it is thin so I'm going to to put 50 into the x size and 50 into the y size all right something like this now we still have this previous rope selected the good rope and uh, this new cylinder I'm going to turn it into polymesh 3D again and I'm going to go into stroke no I'm sorry I'm going to go into the transform activate symmetry but uh, not just any symmetry this is going to be radial symmetry radial symmetry along the yeah y-axis and I'm going to need three three points like so. No, not y-axis. How about x? No. Z. Yeah. Perfect. Z-axis. And I'm going to draw this rope. First of all, I, I need to make sure that it is wide enough. No, not like this. It'll probably take several tries. I'm just trying to draw in a straight line. Okay, it took me a little time, but finally I've managed to create something like this. I'm going to click in uh, the um, in any area of this object to clear the curves. Now it is just a polygonal object, right? And it has two polygroups. 
and I'm going to hide this cylinder in the middle because I no longer need it. And I'm going to go to the geometry and delete hidden. And now I have this construction which again I can twist. 180 almost does it. Yeah. <clears throat> almost perfect with a little bit back and forth again. I've managed to establish an almost perfect parameter for this operation. And now again we are going to the brush, create insert mesh, new, back to our sphere. There are several ropes here now, but this one is going to be the most impressive. Uh, stroke, stroke, curve, curve mode. Okay, I'll switch off the symmetry by pressing X. Again, there are several segments here and I want to, first of all, I want to press stretch to make sure that they are stretched along the path. Curve resolution, a parameter I forgot, uh, a parameter which I forgot about, which uh, increases the quality of the, of the entire spline. Let's say four. Yeah, much better. Now, weld points and the points are welded. Uh, the seams are not perfect. They're imperfect because uh, the shape is too complicated. If you, if you don't need each segment of this, each uh, part of this rope to have a twist of its own, uh, you can achieve much better result when it comes to, to the seams. But if you don't need to see this curve up close, if it is some small element, for instance, on your character, this trick works perfectly fine. As you can see, it looks pretty complicated and highly detailed. Well, that's pretty much it! I know it looks complicated, but in fact it is not. And the important thing to remember is that all custom-made brushes have to be saved into files. Otherwise, uh, any, any brush, including this rope, will be lost once you close the program. When you close the program and open it again, uh, this rope you've created painstakingly will disappear. So you will need to save it into files and that is a thing to remember. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you soon.